when making repairs to anything, a basic understanding of how that thing is composed and how it functions is necessary. This fact is no different when it comes to wood repair. It is all too easy to oversimplify wood restoration and repair. Historically, the approach has been to completely replace the wood or to simply fill decay with body fillers. This may be a quick fix, but it is only masking the problem, and the repair is bound to fail or need replacing down the line. In order to understand the best way to repair decayed wood, let's take a look at the science of wood growth, decay, and repair. As a tree grows, the outer layers called the sapwood are added in growth rings each year. As new sapwood rings are deposited, the inner heartwood rings begin to die and harden. As this growth continues, byproducts of the life cycle are deposited in the heartwood things like acids, waxes, and oils. These deposits give the heartwood its color, as well as provide protection against rot and moisture penetration. In the old growth lumber found in many historic homes, these heartwood growth rings are densely packed and much stronger than commercially available lumber today. This stems from the fact that these trees were allowed to grow at their own pace over hundreds of years in old growth forests. The lumber grown today is grown rapidly through a variety of processes, this results in wider growth rings and produces a product with much more sapwood, as there is no time for the wood to mature into heartwood. The sapwood will absorb moisture more readily and decay more quickly because it lacks the natural oils deposited in the heartwood. Understanding how the wood is grown is only part of the science of wood repair. To fully understand the best approach to wood repair, we must look at the other half of the story, how wood decays. It is common knowledge that over years of exposure to sunlight and moisture, wood will show signs of rot and decay. But what is actually happening within the wood to cause this degradation? When wood is harvested, it is dried to a very low moisture content relative to its natural moisture content. This drying creates voids within the cells of the wood which will all too readily accept water from the environment around them. The two main components of cell walls in wood are cellulose and linen. If we think of wood as a building, cellulose makes up the building blocks, or bricks, while the linen is the bonding agent, or mortar. Moisture absorbed into wood creates the perfect environment for fungi, which will feast hungrily on the natural sugars that make up cellulose. This leaves only the linen, which makes for a very weak structure. Imagine again the building with all of the bricks removed, and only the mortar remaining. This is why simply covering or filling the decayed wood is bound to fail. There is no structure left to support the repair.